Cody here. Ethan's here. Peyton's here. No M Daddy. No Corey. Gavin's here. Ebay's here. Carter's here. Andre. All right. Um, today we'll look at the next lab and, um, before I forget, so we all don't get in trouble, we need to wear masks and out there safety glasses. And that's all I'm going to say. Um, this Friday, Friday's class. Um, I'm picturing kind of the way this week has gone, like Monday, we'll meet on zoom, go over a few things. Wednesday, we'll look at a couple things in lecture in person and then have some lab time. And then Friday will just be open lab. So that'll be your time to do whatever labs, um, you may or may not need to do or get caught up on or anything, but I'm not going to take attendance on Fridays. So that's your time to do whatever lab work you feel like you need to do. Make sense? So this coming Friday is Good Friday. Okay, so you guys should have enough information now to do this lab without me even walking you through it because we have motor starter and we also have this CR1. What is that thing? That's the control relay coil. So we've walked through how that thing works and what is the difference between a control relay and a motor starter? Yeah, could you use a control relay for a motor? Yeah, you could. As long as these contacts are rated for enough amperage to to um, to bear the load of whatever that motor is doing. But the only difference between this and this are these thing, things down here. Remember what those are? Overload. So you could use a control relay, but you'd have to have a separate overload relay that would uh, kill power to the motor if the motor started to overheat. So in this ladder diagram, the example um, CR1, we're going to use a control relay that looks like this. You should all have this Bulletin 700 uh, relay on your train. Can you guys remember how these work? Remember where you land the two wires for your coil? So this is a 120 volt coil. Um, where do I land the wires to energize this thing? Remember? Yep, these two right here. If you took this thing apart, You'd be able to see that these two well maybe that might be molded closed but these are the connections that go in here and all it is is a wire that goes in goes round and round 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 and round round, round comes back out okay but when we put 120 volts on that it creates magnetism pulls the contacts in. you'll see this thing gets sucked in and it changes the state of all of these so if i had four lights like uh green yellow red and uh, whatever, purple lights here. When I energize this coil, let's say de-energized, forget that, de-energized. If I put four lights on here and I have 120 volts going to each and every one, um, and then down here at the bottom, I had the hot going to each one of the lights. 
So this would be green, yellow, red, and what did I say, purple? Up here is 120, 120, 120, 120. Right now, as it stands, would any of the lights be on? This one would be, and this one would be, because these are normally closed. So right now, if I put my meter on here, there'd be continuity across this and this. But when I energize the coil and this pulls in, all four of these change state. So this becomes open, this becomes closed, that becomes open, and that becomes closed. Make sense? All right. Um, let's walk through and number this thing together. What? Yeah, why didn't I give those to you? Did you get it, eBay? Another thing I can do is take over your screen and show you what I got up here, but just let me know if you want to do that. Anyway, what was I doing? Oh, we're going to number this thing. Okay, Cody, what's this number? One. Yep. Will, what's this number? Three. Ethan, what's this number? Two. Carter, what's this number? Two. eBay, what would this number be? Two. Nope. Remember, twos are all neutrals. That's going to be everything over here. Four. Peyton, right, Chandra? Yeah. M Daddy. 
What's this one? Five. Nope. That's you. Gavin, what's this number here? Four. Yeah. Caden, what's this number? Four. Yep. Cody, what's this number? Four. Yep. So with this. Uh, Will, what's this number right here? Five. Yep. Ethan, what's this number? Carter, what's this number? Yeah. So on and so forth. Uh, then we got two, two, two. And when I wire this up behind me, I'm not going to put the numbers on. Oh, also keep in mind that if you're one of those people going back and looking at it and you come in here and look at mine, I might have a wire number on one of these that's from like three labs ago. So don't pay attention to the numbers, okay? Uh, what else? We good? Let's do this. I'm gonna go red. I need to come off my transformer. Diffuse one, diffuse nine. Is that done? Yep. Coming from the fuse over to the stop button. Is that done? Yep. From the stop going to the start, this little guy right here. Is that done? Yep. I also need a wire number three going to the normally open holding, normally open contact of control relay one. I got this control relay coil and I got this uh, normally open contact. So that is where I need to start going and figuring some stuff out. Right now I'm going to the motor starter with that wire. Different than what I'm going to do here. What wire number is this? Three. And is this a control relay? That's where I'm going, right? So which part of this am I going to? What the? So I'm going to this control relay on my trainer and I'm doing this little wire right here. So coming from that three, one of those three locations up on my buttons, I need to hit part of this control relay. Which part? You wanted to get a top center button for a switch. These? No, because that's the coil, right? On your print, the coil is right here. I'm trying to go to a normally open contact, which would be either this two or four. Now your relays might not be set up the same way. You have to find a normally open contact, okay? So what if I couldn't see this little tiny tab up here at the top? I can see them, I can read them. I don't know if you can, but this one is normally open. See that little tab right there? And these are normally closed. So I'm going to hit a normally open. On this thing. But if I couldn't see these, how can I test to see which ones are normally open or normally closed? Right, you just check for continuity. If I put my meter on here, right now I would get no tone. And then if I took a screwdriver and pushed this thing in, then I would get a tone. Follow? Okay.
right? Chandra. Next step, what should I do now? That's right, I'm gonna put a check mark on here because that's what my instructor told me to do. Bloop. Are my threes done? Sure are. Um, okay, so let's start with wire number four. Oh. By the way, I don't know if I told you that this is a ladder diagram. Did you guys figure that out by now? You see how it's kind of looks like a ladder with all the, you know, the rungs going this way and then this stuff and then that stuff. Um, I should tell you that. Rung numbers, ladder diagrams. Here's basically all you need to know about ladder diagrams. They're red like a book, left to right, top to bottom. And it's kind of why I'm starting the way I am. But there's also things that aren't on here called rung numbers. So this would be rung number one, two, three, rung number four, rung number five. Over here on the right, on prints, you will see in parentheses, um, this one would be a three. What do you think that represents? That's exactly right. On this, <laughs> on this rung, it's telling you that there's a relay on here and associated with that relay coil, you will find contacts on these rungs. So on rung number three, there's a normally open contact. See that? So if down here on rung six, there was another control relay coil that was normally closed, if this was CR1. So same thing as this, but it's normally closed. Over here, you would see, instead of this, you would see, um, three and guesses six and also you would see that the number six is underlined that underline means that that contact that you would find on rung six is normally closed okay take all stuff so we're not getting too confused Okay, wire number four, I need to go from the start button to, um, there's a method to my madness, but do I have any other wire number fours that are buttons? I do. So I have another normally open push button down here. That's gonna be a small wire and that's why I'm gonna start with that first. But really you could go from, this point to anywhere you could go there you could go here it doesn't matter all those fours are going to be connected right but for the sake of doing things easily i'm going to do this little guy first so start to another start and that's going to be this button is normally open and i already know because i've labeled it this one is the other green button okay so
my print. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do this. Where else do we need a wire number four? That control relay. Right. This normally open here. That's what you're saying. So from one of these two locations, I need to go to the coil of CR1. No, I don't. Yes, I do. But um, he's saying go to the other side of that contact down here. Remember, this was wire number three. The wire number four would land right here, right? Mark this off. Where else do I need one? Motor starter coil. The motor starter coil. This is the motor starter coil. This the control relay coil. Yes, we do. Go on here. That's one of these two screws up at the top. So this is my coil. So I can really just take a little jumper from here, and bring it around to the top. That's done. Well, where else do I need a wire number four? The green light, which we need right here. Um, where can I land this? Any of those other number four locations, and one of them happens to be up here on this coil. And I haven't exceeded two wires on there yet, so that's where I'm going to put it if I want to. If I'm ever like, uh, hey, where should I land this? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to land it right here, but you can't see what the hell I'm doing because my fat ass is in the way. And just say, hey, the fat ass is in the way. Okay? We practice it together. One, two, three. Yeah. Hey, that's <laughs> bad. I didn't even know you were actually saying well, that's kind of cool. Okay. 
Okay. That makes the green light done. Boop. We're missing one number four. Where can I, where's that going? That lowest, lowest one on the diagram, is that that uh, holding contact? Yep, that's the auxiliary contactor, the normally open, that's on the motor starter itself. Remember the little auxiliary contact over here from the other day? So this little normally open right here is what I'm looking for. Wire there. One, two, any number four. So can I go up into this green light? Sure can. This is wire number freaking four. Boop. Wire number fives. The other the other side of the second button. So push button two. It's going to be right here. And where can I go? Two of them are going to the motor starter, and one of them is going to the red light. So for me looking at this, I'm going to go to the red light first because it's right there. Do you see as I'm doing this how there's, well, I guess I'll say that um, as I'm doing this, does it make sense why it's a good idea to, to label them, to put wire numbers on as you go? And it's a good idea to put check marks on your print as you go. So you can see what's what, where everything's been. So I just went from this side of that push button over to the red light. I also need a wire number five going to the motor starter, one to the coil, and one to the other side of the normally open contact. So I will pull from the red light closer. over to the other side of my contact.
<clears throat> so I just uh, that, then I just have to hit my coil, which is right here. I already had this little jumper in from the other day. So so this is where I just landed the wire and I'm just going to jump right over here. To the coil. Are my five is done. Yep. Now let's look at the neutrals. So the neutrals for the lights, remember they have that shared neutral. And on my terminal strip, all of those are made up to the neutral going back to the transformer. So that means the neutrals for the lights are okay. The neutral for the motor starter coil, which is right here, that's still made up from the other day. Remember, I'm going down through the normally closed contact and then back up to the number two terminal strip. What about the, the two for the control relay? That done? No. Nope. I still need a neutral. I need that, that return path from here up to, to the terminal strip. One last thing I want to show you guys is my nose. Remember I showed you these little tabs up here, these little bonding jumpers? Well, everything labeled two on here should be connected because I've got those on. What would happen if um, this, this is the one going back to the transformer? What would happen if this screw right here was loose. That would mean that this does not have a good connection to all the rest of the tubes. Make sense? And I've seen that before where people run into weird stuff and when, when neutrals go awry, you start to see weird things happen. Like lights that you don't have energized will turn on and weird stuff happens. So if you ever run anything weird on here, it's probably because you don't have all these tight. I just wanted to point that out while I thought about it. I don't think it should be tight. So am I done? I am. Fire this bad boy up. I guess first let's uh, look and see what this thing is supposed to do. Without all of this stuff on here. What is supposed to happen here? Stop button's gonna kill everything, obviously, but if I hit the start, 
and this closes, what should happen? The motor won't turn on yet. This is open and this is open. All right. So I hit that start. This energizes. When that happens, this closes, correct? So that when I let go of this, I still have current flowing through here, which means this is also on and these are energized. So these have the potential of 120 volts on them. And long story short, I push the first start button. This energizes and this light turns on. At that point, I can hit the second start push button, which energizes the motor starter, closing these, making this turn, and it also closes this so that when I let go of this button, I'm still getting current flowing through there. So both holding contacts are doing their job and the red light turns on too. So back all that crap off. And what we want to happen is I push button one and the green light will turn on. I push button two, the motor will spin and the red light will come on. If I don't push this button first though, I can never, I can never turn that on, right? That's why control relays are called control relays. So if you had a whole big process like you will uh, see in some future classes, like those process control trainers back there, you might have a big long process with a big long ladder diagram and all of it will turn off just by hitting the stop button because you're using control relays to, to initialize the whole thing. Make sense? All right, I've talked enough, let's bring this on. First button should just be the green light, right? And you saw that control relay suck in. Have you seen one of these energized yet? This little red indicator is pulled in. I could zoom in on it and maybe you'd be able to see it or maybe not. See it? So, oh, so that's de-energized. That's energized. Um, okay. So that's push button one. Push button two then should turn the red light on and spin the motor, correct? Oh, look at that. Isn't that just peachy? And the stop button should kill all of it. That's <laughs> fast. All right. That's, I'm done. Uh, Next week, we'll, we'll look at, uh, I'll just show you. I think you're lab number seven, right? We're adding the forward and reverse motor starter, which is uh, this bad boy here. That does two directions. And then we got some limit switches on there and we've got a handoff auto selector switch, so. You've got enough information in your brains now to start working on uh, some stuff. And now this is your time to go work on whatever you'd like to. You can stay as long as you want or uh, leave whenever you want. Cool. Let's rock it. What? Yes. A good question. I don't know why that is. I'm trying to think if you, I guess it would work either way. 
I don't know. I'd have to Google that one. Unless it has something to do with the the heat of the, like it has to be on the load side. I don't know. What's that? Oh my gosh. What'd you come here with? An idea? You got wire strippers? Okay. <laughs>